Hello, and welcome to another video. Continuing on with the theme of my previous loadout video, we're going to be covering advanced prototype and tactics. Um, for the most part, we do have slightly one more option compared to Marauder. I'll show you guys that right now. So if you see my implants right now, these are the three implants that you'll probably want to buy. Mandalorian Armorance package, mostly for PvE. However, it's very good sustained damage. So I'm just going to preface this because I know I didn't add it in my previous video, but really there's only like two really good choices for Marauder at the moment. But uh, you have three for PT. You take Veteran Ranger for bursts, so pretty much PvP. Um, if you ever feel like you want to have better sustained damage, take Shoulder, uh, not the Shoulder Cannon, but the uh, Mandalorian Armorance package over Veteran Ranger. Um, and on top of that, the only real tacticals you have is overwhelming offense, flame detonation. You can use taunt stun, though I don't particularly recommend it because taunts are very valuable. But if you're already being tunneled anyway, maybe it's not a bad choice. Um, going into our talent selection, I want to show you guys what I actually take. So I'll reach in now and you can see just my normal loadout in case that's just all you're looking for. But I'll explain it a little bit here. All right. So Power Burst is just so much better than the alternative options. So for example, this one, the range indicator is not correct, but it I think it's like six or eight meters or something like that. It's not it's not very good. Three additional targets. It's not great. I don't really recommend taking it. Um this one, don't really recommend taking it either, mostly just because of the damage that you'll get from this is just so much better. And it also ties in with flame detonation. If you use flame detonation, this talent right here, or passive, its value just kind of like goes through the roof. Um, so like what you could do normally in your rotation, or not rotation, but I guess your opener, right? So let's say you're running in, you throw a TDS at somebody, you're going to gut them, and then you're going to energy burst. That's going to immediately amplify your thermal detonator. But let's say you're in a situation that they're not running away, they're not going to stop you. Let's say you, like... Uh, you get a perfect GCD window off and they're stacking. You could uh, throw TD, gut, energy burst, flame sleep to then explode the uh, thermal to AOE on everybody and it would also do increased damage. You always want to keep that in mind outside of the opener as when you don't need a gut, you can just throw, throw TD and then flame sleep, but it is good to have gut on the main target so it does more damage. But uh, that really makes this tactical a lot better than what it seems at first glance. And then I take a leap. Uh, I really hate that this talent is forced upon you. This basically puts your leap on a longer cooldown than it you know, normally is, which is super unfortunate. I hope they revise that because I would like to just have regular leap with, uh, without the talent. If not, like rework the talent to make it not like a longer cooldown. So as you see, the cooldown is 14.4 seconds, but let's say you do the first leap, right? You then have six seconds to use the second leaf, and if you don't use the second leaf, then the full cooldown of 15 seconds goes into play, which is about what, uh, that's like 21 seconds. That's, that's, that ain't cool to me. That, that ain't cool. I don't like that. Uh, Real and Rattle is also a really fun one. Um, I would say out of these choices, you don't really pick any of the other ones, but you could definitely take Real and Rattle uh, any day. Like This is a fun one to go if you don't really care about leaping as much. And uh, having the uh, two grapple charges is also kind of cool with the you know reset on rocket punch. We don't care as much about that, but double grapple is actually actually pretty good. Um, and then moving on from there, um, I do use easy prey every now and then. I kind of recommend this in any kind of like match scenario that you know that you're going to just stomp people. Like uh, everybody's going to be popping defenses and whatnot. And uh, you're probably going to kill them really fast. You'll get these stacks. You'll pretty much always have these stacks every time. You want to apply gut on somebody that might survive for more than a few seconds to increase your gut damage. So using gut for only a 7k hit won't feel as bad because it'll be hitting like 27k. Well, that's not that much more. It still helps. And it also helps you from, you know, cucking your, your heat, basically. Uh, that's the main reason why I would ever use this. And I don't think it's really all that bad. But I also don't think it's that great. Unfortunately, we don't actually know how much damage Juggler does. At least I don't know. Um, if anybody actually knows, that'd be great. 
uh, or whether it even works, I have no idea. Uh, but this is basically just more single turret damage, which is great. And then this one, this one's interesting. This one actually does work. Um, I just feel like, you know, AP is not really designed around AoE, so it's kind of kind of feels like a kind of redundant unless you're getting into like a cleave match that you know that you're going to like be playing there's no point in taking this most of the time as ap you're probably killing off stragglers or uh not really in the cleave or actually cleaving because cleave usually doesn't last that much or last that long uh anymore uh this is one that i love to take having uh 15 meters on most of your abilities including the rail shot is uh it's pretty crazy. Um, I wouldn't say power yield cooldown reduction is uh, very good because it's only every 10 seconds, so that's whatever. But this is a really nice one to have. And then you have advanced shielding, which is what I'm currently taking. The increased duration of power yield is very nice. Uh, the culto, 45%, not great, but the power yield duration is really nice. Just, just because you have power load tied to it. Basically, never take stealth scan, but there are some times that you would maybe want to consider taking it. But for the most part, in those situations, you probably want advanced shielding instead. Uh, maybe in like uh, tank heal matches where you're 100% going to be protected, maybe take this just so you can find the Marauders uh, force camouflaging all the time. And then this one, I think this one's really important. So if you're really good at uh, heat management at all times. Pyro Shield's really nice. This one, I think, is overall just the best because regardless of whether how good you are at heat management, you can kind of ignore some heat management. While also at the same time, if somebody does a CC to you, your next ability will do increased 10% more damage, which is really good. Then for the last one, Iron Will. This one's really nice. The cooldown determination is reduced by 30 seconds to cooldown if he is. Reduced by 15 seconds, this used to include hydraulics, but they decided to remove that. So this is, this is a nice one, but there's never really any reason to take this because you have two CC breakers, so there's no reason for you know, needing the reduced cooldown of determination and then the reduced uh, cooldown of vent heat kind of becomes redundant when you have this one. So overall, I pretty much always recommend this one. There's not much point for the other ones. This one you usually never want to take because Juggernauts are still around and Pulled Hatred is probably one of the more common things that uh, Juggernauts are going to take outside of the ED. So you really don't want to fuel their um, Pulled Hatred. <laughs> I'm going to be honest here, you really, really don't want to do it, especially when everybody's playing uh, Focus and Rage. Um, AOE DR is incredible. There are certain situations that you probably just want to make sure that you have it. However, if you're in a situation that you're not really cleaving, you're not getting into cleave, reflective armor is just that much better. It's free damage and uh, doesn't doesn't uh, believe have a like a hinder rate, so it procs like pretty much any time you get hit by an AOE. This actually does a lot more than just three thousand because it can crit. Um, then you have the choice of getting stun, hydraulics, or shoulder cannon heal. Usually, you're not using shoulder cannon heal. There's probably some niche uses like. Maybe in Solar Rain, if you don't need Hydraulics, but usually you do need Hydraulics. Hydraulics is probably the best movement ability in the game. So giving this up is uh, not, a, not a great feeling. It's 35 seconds, lasts for 10 seconds. You get the super movement speed with it too. Um, and like tank heal matches, you'll probably want the stun because you're actually able to take the stun without feeling it like the, like the negative impacts that other classes have to like take. So for example, Marauder has to do Undying, Mad Dash, or Choke. This is a much more forgiving selection, so you can actually afford having stun. And then for these, um, usually the tank will take this one instead of the DPS. So you don't really have to worry about this. And then Sonic Rebounder is nice for appealing for your teammates, but nearly all times you want to have your second Cult of Breaker. If you don't care about the rest of it, you just really want that second Cult of Breaker because you can use that Cult of Breaker first to break any any of the uh, like regular stunts, right? And then you can use your actual breaker for things like flashbang, whirlwind, stuff like that. If they so happen to use it, or even grenade on you, right? Because people will start using grenades more now that they don't have another CC to fall back on.
So overall, I would recommend this as like your probably default lay layout or loadout. If you're new to AP, uh, definitely recommend checking these out. And then I'll go into Vanguard real quick. All right, continuing off where we left. Um, this is Vanguard. Oops, let me let me equip a blaster rifle real quick. Forgive me. Uh, so I can actually regen so you can see my selections. These are pretty much the same selections as uh, Imperial. The big difference is that Power Yield is called Balmorian um, Advanced Weaponry on this one. So basically, you're still taking high yield explosives. You don't want to use these other two just because they're just, they're just not as good. We're still taking the leap. Um, this is the same thing as uh, Juggler. Again, we don't know exactly how much damage this does, so sometimes you'll take Tactical Knife. And uh, you can try this one if you know that you're actually going to cleave. And then pretty much always recommend War Machine, only because having the extra five seconds on Power Yield is, you know, it means more power loads, which is more damage. However, if you're not too good at uh, staying on target, taking this is just better because of the increased range. However, uh, again, with the rest of the options, I don't feel like you can afford either of the other two. This one's just too good to not take. And then you have the choice of AOE DR, reflective armor. And then you have your hydraulics and your cult breaker. Pretty much the same overall. Um, I know that, you know, it's not too hard to match them up, but I just figured I might as well show you guys this so you know, like, what the difference is, what they look like. Because having them matched up is just, is just tedious. Uh, other than that, I hope you guys have a... Good day and uh, good day. Um, how to end a video? I'm not very good at it. Um, hope you guys have a good rest of your day. Uh, I appreciate you guys for watching. If you guys have any requests or any like video ideas that you would like to see me do, just let me know. I'm avoiding guides until 7.2, so uh, if you guys do have questions about classes, just go ahead and ask. I'm more than happy to help.